This is Jordan Grace, and you're listening to the Social Suplex Podcast Network. BWB, this is One Nation Radio. You better get it right. Rich Ladder, James Boy came to give them life. The Blackest Wrestling Podcast has come to kick all ass and drop it six feet if they kick it trash. Word, let me welcome y'all to something different. And if you dig it, man, you should let some friends listen. We be getting it in. That's on the regular, dude. Ravish and flow, but this shit rule. See, James don't rap, so I had to break it down. The whole network, man, we coming for the crown. Raps in the columns, I keep them both covered Making the beats too, so the listeners can bump it Hit us with the rating, yeah, I'm saying it's a five Before you hit it, talk, bob your head side to side It's One Nation Radio, and this is the beginning It's Rich, and I'm here with James It's time to listen to One Nation you got the, the power of the Arabic this is Mike Sempervivi from WrestlingObserver.com. Check me out on Wrestling Observer Live every day. And also check out your boys, Rich and James, on One Nation Radio. Uh, this is Kenny Omega. We're listening to One Nation Radio. Check it out, guys. These guys know what's up. Big Kenny Omega fans. That's all it counts to me. Goodbye and good night. Hey. Welcome to the September 2nd edition of One Nation Radio. I am your host, Rich Ladder. Here with my co-host, James Boyd. James, what's going on, man? I'm doing good, man. I uh, saw a lot of good wrestling, a lot of great wrestling last night, so I'm in, I'm in a good mood. Yes, sir. Um, so we are back here on the Social Suplex Podcast Network. If you guys didn't get to uh, check out our show from last week doing the TV reviews from Raw and SmackDown, make sure you look up LOP Radio. We're burning up the downloads on there. Uh, we could always use your help to uh, you know listen to everything on there and, and drop high ratings and all that. But yes, uh, we watched All In last night. We got a full review of that. We got NXT on deck. We got a bunch of topics uh, coming through for you guys today. But, um, yeah, make sure you guys uh, are rating us on this, you know, feed here of the Social Suplex Podcast Network um, on your platinum, which platform of choice. We're Independent Podcast Network. The only way we're going to reach more people is with your help by sharing the show and rating it. Make sure you check out all the other great shows on the network, including The Outsider's Edge with Rance and Carl, Ricky and Clive, um, th- keeping it strong style, and grown men watch this shit. And, you know, we got... Plenty of great stuff to come. I believe uh, Ricky and Clive and the um, Outsiders as they have a panel for a mid-year awards thing. So it'll be interesting to see what those guys come up with. Of course, I've been um, preparing the One Nation Radio Awards all year in a Word docu- document. So I feel like this is going to be our most thorough and best version of the One Nation Radio Awards yet. Um yeah, man. So, so what's going on with you, man? Like, we got, you know, we, we prepare, prepare, folks. We have a long show today, so we're just gonna kick back and kick it with y'all. Um, yeah, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm just happy that I actually saw a uh, NWA, a NWA title match that actually uh, was relevant and meant something for the, you know, since I've been alive. So, I, yeah, it's kind of happy <laughs> that, you know, it's been like, you know, last time that thing was actually relevant. Like, I couldn't remember shit because I was like three, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I was a uh, really good show, man. Like, top to bottom, it was a very, uh, I mean, there's probably only two matches I would say that if, if they if they in retrospect, in retrospect would uh, go back, would go out there and say, like, yeah, let's just join those and, like, move on what we have and save time. Especially <clears> when they, you know, they had a 28-minute uh, main event plan that only went 12 or 14 or whatever it was. But uh, other than that, like, I think I think it was a really great night for, um, for, for those guys. And I think it was a really great night for pro wrestling. We'll be right back with our review for All In. Yeah, man, as James was saying, I, I, I couldn't agree more as far as, you know, for the pro wrestling industry, for the history of wrestling and what this event is on, is in real time and what is going to be in the future. Um, I, I th- There's no way to say that this was anything but a monumental moment and a success for the guys doing it, for the fans going there, and also the energy around the event with StarCast, which I heard was like absolutely phenomenal uh, for everyone that was involved with it. This night was I, I described it to uh, my boy Chad, who asked for some recommendations on it. Uh, and I, after I gave him, you know, the five matches I recommended from the show and told him pretty much qualified it with like, yo, I got like five matches that are probably like above four stars. Then like I thought about it and I was like, but this show wasn't really even about like star ratings. It was about 
moments that uh, you never thought would happen, surprises, funny shit, and entertainment, and it was like the great matches were just there too, uh, essentially along for the ride, which is, honestly, to me, that feels like the way professional wrestling should be done. Like, I'm here for the great matches all day, but, you know, when you got everything else that flows with it, this just makes it just such a special experience for not only the folks in the building, but the folks that, like, didn't get to go. I would have loved to go to All In, but I just, you know, I couldn't go. So. Yeah, definitely. Like, this felt like an amalgamation of so many different things, and, like, they took the best, like, the best essence and, uh, of all these different like uh sources and like distilled it down and uh i mean for better or worse that's what we got um i mean i think we'll talk about the worst later when we get start talking about the joey ryan stuff but i mean that's my opinion like i'm sure i mean i'm not sure i know people loved it but like that's not my thing but um like it felt like if you know with the nwa time there it felt like a like an old freaking uh like georgia championship wrestling show like like a like a jim cracker promotion at, at one point like it felt like a wcw show at one point like a good wcw uh nitro like era um show at one point it felt like it felt like wwe like we had the under we had the undertaker show up right <laughs> you know we had the other we had undertaker appearance with druids and all that except you know they they you know they were they were white inflatable penises but you know, they were druids. Yes. Um, Long white dicks. So, yes. <laughs> so, and then, we, you know, and then with the six way, like that felt, I mean, obviously like it wasn't Lucha rules, but it felt like very much like a Lucha style, like style. Now, not just because there were Mexicans in the ring uh, bumping their asses off, but like that Bucks, that Bucks match for the time it was around, like that match was wild. Um, And they, I mean, obviously cause they had to fit so much, jam pack so much stuff in because they only had 12 minutes for they had to get off air. But, um, and then you had like the big match filled with like with with Kenny and Omega there. So I'm sorry, with Kenny and Okada there. So like yeah. it had yeah. all of these things and did it very well. And I don't think we've ever seen a show. I, th- I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a show like that where it's like this is the best things of all the stuff that's going on around the world at this current time that people all love. We're gonna try to do our best to do like get to present you samplings of all of this stuff that's all great from all around the world, all around the country in different forms. And I mean, I had some to them. Like, I feel like you know, for if, the, if that if their goal was to try to do that, like I felt like they got you know ninety five percent of the way there. Yeah, it felt like, and, and as you say that, like like bringing like the amalgamation of it, that kind of feels like it felt like a Dr. Dre album. Like, <laughs> like I'm gonna go out and get <laughs> Jay Z to help with this song. I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce you to a dude named Eminem. I'm gonna introduce you to Snoop Doggy Dog, like <laughs> on the Chronic or whatever. And it's like all the everything you want. Like, it, it, I I enjoyed it so much. The arena was beautiful. The um you know, the video board and all that, like, it just felt like this was like, oh my gosh. Um, but let's, let's get to it. Um, I didn't get a chance to catch the, the pre-show. Uh, I had a couple things going on, but, uh, SCU defeated, uh, the Briscoe brothers in a title match. James, uh, what did you think of the, this match? I know you caught this one. I thought this was a very good opening match. Um, I think it was, um, I think this was a, a, a real showcase for SCU, uh, Kazarian and, and, um, and Sky, like I'd never seen them before until I realized that uh, until I was, it was lit, I was alerted to the fact that like Scorpio Sky was Harold from the old anger management team. Hell no, uh, 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 skits, gotcha. which is like it which made me like, oh, oh my god, why is he do non WWE? Then I found out why he's non WWE, and I was like, oh, that's unfortunate. But um, uh, maybe you should be a better person. But uh, I thought, you know, I thought they had a, a really good match. I really enjoyed the the Rocky Three stuff, where it's, it's Rocky and, and Apollo together, and I really enjoy Sky's like, I guess his opening uh, his opening statement that everyone knows is like, I'm from South California and I am in Chicago. This is the worst place I've ever. Been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so now, James, I know you don't watch Being the Elite every week, but literally every week that they're on there, they go to a new place and say it about whatever town they're in. This is the worst town I've ever been in. Like, so there was a funny one where where Christopher Daniels was in Arena Mexico the, the other week. This man did the whole bit in Spanish. I was screaming. <laughs> He spoke Spanish, and I think they translated on the screen, if I'm not mistaken. And then when right, they, so- 
so, when they finally get to Southern California, they don't even like act happy to be there. Like something else happens and their day gets ruined and and they don't do the thing, essentially. Gotcha. Well, that's funny that you mentioned that they were in Arena, Mexico and they did that because like speaking out, you know, after hearing about the story with Sammy Callahan, um, from this weekend, like, <laughs> all right, right, you want, all right, you, you want to act up? They'll show, they'll, they'll flash you like pistol off. Yes, so, yes. Show you the, the, the hit with the ratchet. Right. That's how shit happens, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, after that, uh, the over the budget battle royal uh, featured Moose, Brandon Cutler, Trent Beretta, Chuck Taylor, uh, Rocky Romero, Cheeseburger, Hurricane Helms, Ethan Page, Tommy Dreamer, Jimmy Jacobs, Punishment Martinez, Austin Gunn, Billy Gunn, Marco Stunt, Brian Cage, Jordan Grace, who was on the beginning of this podcast, What's Up Jordan, uh, Colt Cabana, Bully Ray, and Flip Gordon. No, 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 it ain't Flip Gordon, that, that is Chico. Oh, Chico, yes, Ch- Chico, Chico Gordon. Um, so, they had me fooled this entire time. Until Monday that uh, Flip Gordon wouldn't be on this show. They had to deal with him doing the hosting gig uh, to watch the show. Um, and what they did this week, they kind of gave it away to me on being the elite. Like they had these trading cards and I believe Cody had them in his hand. And then Marty was like, what's that? Hold on, what's that? And it was a card of Flip, Flip Gordon. Like, you know, you saw the Omega one. You saw the Cody one. You saw the Bucks. And then, you know... And then Cody acted like, hold on, you wasn't supposed to see that. Like, you know, like it was like they, they got caught breaking kayfabe. So I don't know if they threw that in there intentionally. But uh, from that point, I knew Flip Gordon would be on the show. Um, I, I didn't see the match, but I, I'm hearing it's getting great reviews as far as like being one of the best battle royals folks have ever seen. Um, yeah, not too much more to say there. But uh, Flip Gordon got the win and the crowd went crazy for the reveal, according to Jeremy and Josh, who were there live uh, reporting back for us, and I believe they'll have an in-person perspective review uh, dropping <clears throat> on the channel this week. Um, but yeah, yeah. we, we got. Yeah, I think I think it should be mentioned that on the WGN show, like there were a lot of problems with the audio. Um, they were working on a lot of kinks, so uh, I think that, I think we should bring that up too. Like that's one of the reasons why I said like it got you know almost all the way there. It accomplished like. You know, in the high percentile of what his goals were set out to be, but like the, the audio production was was like it was weird at certain points. Like the commentary was above, the commentary volume was way above the crowd um, a lot of times. So you know, unless the crowd was really loud, you couldn't really feel it. So yeah, like, but I mean, you know, trial and error. But like, it was a great show. So they opened like I was watching the article version of this and. It didn't start right away. It didn't start till about seven or eight minutes in, and it was in the middle of Matt Cross versus MJF. Now, MJF is going to be your favorite WWE wrestler in five years. Uh, for folks that that aren't really into the uh, whole thing or even know about this guy, um, that only watch WWE, when he shows up there, you're going to think he's an absolute superstar. This guy's a phenomenal talker. I, he's pretty much the Miz of the Indies uh, with a little bit better in-ring. Um Looks like uh, Matt Cross defeated him there. Uh, I didn't get to see the whole match, but did you catch the whole match, uh, James? No, I actually uh, arrived late. I had to leave. I had to miss the Battle Royal as well, but um, I came back like right at the finish of that match, so I really I don't have much to tell you. Um, but you know, it was just an opener, and it looked like you know the crowd wasn't that enthused for it. But you know, I have to go back and rewatch it. So to yeah, deal, to be honest, opinion on it. So to deal with it on this one, and I feel, I feel like I think I heard Brian Alvarez mention this. <clears throat> they put this match out there at the beginning, not knowing, or excuse me, it wasn't, it wasn't Brian Alvarez. It was the dude from What Culture, not Simon, one of the other guys. They said they put this one out there pretty much making sure the pay-per-view feed w- was getting everything was working correctly and this wasn't a match that anyone would get upset about missing if they got you know cut in late or anything like that and i was like that's brilliant if they did that hey rich yeah isn't that how your boy kenny got in trouble in daytona last uh a few months ago um no these guys actually have names okay but my point is, they did the same thing. Like, yeah, throw, throw, the, throw the local match, throw some local Florida guys on the card just so we can that make wasn't sure live, up though. and right and run it. That, that, wasn't, oh, okay. that, wasn't, that wasn't broadcast, though. This was. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so after that, uh, Sean Mooney interviewed Nick Aldis. Uh, James, I don't know if you got a chance to watch the NWA build-up videos with Nick Aldis and Cody. Uh, and this is what kind of, and w- more we'll get to that later. But um, Aldis, you know, comes off like a real-world champion from the old-school era. And he basically said that, you know, he's the greatest and uh, Aldis pr- promised to retain the title. After that, we got Christopher Daniels and uh, Stephen Amell, which was impressive for what it was. Stephen Amell is a good athlete. You saw those two big spots that they worked into the match. It was a Shane McMahon special, essentially. Like, like I, I am essentially a backyarder or or just a good athlete. And Daniels, like, he knows what to do. He was guiding him through the match the whole time. It wasn't the smoothest thing in the world. I think I went two and three quarters on it. But um, it it did it more than enough. Uh, I, I wasn't disappointed by it, but what did you think about it, James? Yeah, hey, I thought it was a fine match. It was clunky, and obviously because, you know, you have a guy in there that's so green. Uh, but, you know, he I mean, he did some big stuff, and, I mean, I'm you know, it felt like the crowd respected him for it, and he tried hard. Just there were a bunch of mix-ups because, obviously, you have a guy that's inexperienced in there, and it doesn't matter how um, – doesn't matter how experienced Daniels is. It just – it just it was going to be clunky if it was going to go that long. And um, this is one of the matches that if it were me, like, I would have taken off. But it was still a match that wasn't bad. So, you know, that's – and it was at the first 30 minutes of the show. So what really can you, you know, what is it really to gripe about? And the, and this was, like, one of my um, – I actually liked that they put it on early um, <clears throat> along with the card structure of the event. They didn't come out there and say, hey – the opening match is Kenny Omega versus Pentagon. And then, like, have you, like, way the fuck up here and, and do all that roller coaster shit? They brought you yes. up the hill most of the time. Um, Correct. And, yeah. and I, I think stuff overachieved in certain spots. Um, the fans chanted Broken Arrow when um, <laughs> Stephen and Mel went through the table. That was hilarious. Um, they yeah. this man this man decided to macho man a table on the floor from the top rope like okay guy like yeah, I, I I don't envy you waking up tonight uh, today that I man, don't that man want, <laughs> wants respect um <laughs> but um it was decent they sh- they shook hands after the match and uh, from there Don Callis got a message and left and said he had to talk to Omega and Callis was off commentary for like a couple minutes and then uh and this was a good way to get to bring people on to the show that weren't booked just to get them you know some shine like uh it was Emma to Neil Dash Wood and Mandy Leon were on commentary for the next match, which was a women's fatal four way between Tessa Blanchard, Madison Rain, Britt Baker, and Chelsea Green. Now, Chelsea Green made some headlines for saying um, that this would be the greatest women's match ever, and then Sasha Banks and the women in WWE would need to take notice. Um, so, <clears throat> I don't think this was the greatest women's match I've ever seen, and but maybe Chelsea Green wasn't selling out to a ridiculous extent that most fo- folks thought she was because she had an absolutely uh, star-making performance, if you didn't already know about her. Uh, and, of course, you know, Tessa walked away with the, with the win, which, you know, I thought was going to happen. And this was a, a, a fast-paced, high-energy, awesome, awesome women's match uh, between... Like I, I had never really seen Britt Baker before. Uh, Madison Rain looked, you know, like she was as good as ever and you know she had lots of moments in impact wrestling in the last decade and of course tessa's like tessa's tessa at this point uh what'd you think about this one james yeah i think that aside from the the gum flapping and the boasts that this match was on par with all the stuff you see on uh takeovers what i say that is matches the best stuff i've seen with the women on takeovers or the best of um of Bailey or Oscar or Charlotte or uh, or Sasha, I would say no. But uh, I felt like th- when we talked earlier about how they bring, present you all the stuff that's going on around the world at this time and how they're trying to give you the best of that to the best of their capabilities, I felt like that's what it did. Like this, this was a showcase of these four women kicking ass, and these women were presented as. Showing that what they can do, cap- what they're capable of athletically, like it matched with what they're able to do and present. And I thought it was great. And I keep saying present, so I'm sorry. Yeah, but like present, it, like you know. yeah. But I thought I thought that you know they they all put their best foot forward and they kicked ass, and that's all you know. That's all you can ask for. And it was a great match. So thumbs up for for all four women out there. They you know they did a lot of dives. They did a lot of crazy stuff. And it made me think like 
given how many spotters they had for all these dives, made me think like maybe Charlotte should just never do four moonsaults ever again. Because she's so because <laughs> think of how much bigger she is than all four of those women. And then like, but you know, you have you have to do the whole like hand holding thing and just pretend that she like you know catch them and she just basically lands on her feet into the floor. Like maybe she just probably has to take that out of her repertoire. Like until like they can bring like Rhea Ripley up and you know other folks that are like that can, can catch her. I would say yeah, but then they <laughs> had Nia and then like she and then Nia almost killed her. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, um, like maybe maybe just don't do it. Speaking of presenting, um, uh, T- <laughs> Tessa Blanchard was presented by Madam Ta and uh, Tully Blanchard. Uh, one of them, uh, Madam Ta, being her stepdad, I believe. So, um. That was a cool moment. And there are lots of like little cool moments where legends were were there. And I and to me almost there was like there was no greater instance of this than the next match. So uh the next match was Cody versus Nick Aldis for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. Now <clears throat> they have been dropping great videos on the NWA YouTube channel. I watched the one leading up to this one, and I was like, all right, I'm sold on the match. This at this point, I wasn't rooting for anyone or anything like that. So when after all this came, out, I believe all this came out first, right? No, all this came out last, like okay. to the champion. Okay. So when they flashed to Cody and you saw him walking to the ring where the dude was like rubbing his shoulders and it looked like he was crying because of this whole like you know scene they created, I was like, "Fuck it, I'm rooting for Cody." Like, like go, like yeah, like whoop his ass. This is this felt like such a big moment for him, and it felt like Floyd Mayweather walking out to the ring. It, it was such a bit, big fight atmosphere. I was like, all right, go ahead, flame me, do whatever. I don't give a fuck. Like, I know this shit is great, whatever I'm watching. So go ahead, James. Okay, so we're on Skype when, when we do these shows, and obviously this is this is an audio uh, medium, so you can't see our expressions. But if any, but if any of you guys are still, you know, doing this sad thing where y'all are still watching first take, uh, I want you to imagine Skip Bayless or Max Kellerman saying something uh, off the or something that's unpopular or something that is uh, outside of uh, the realms of of, of, of normalcy or uh, or common sense, and imagine the look that Stephen A. Smith will be giving. Uh, Kellerman or, or Skip Bayless, just just like I don't know if it's disgust or or just dismissal or whatever else. But I want you to imagine me as Stephen A. Smith staring at at this dude, just like, oh, okay, I see what it is now. So, Richard, sir, you are now officially a gimmick. <laughs> okay, you, I don't I don't know what it is. I don't know if because uh Kenny and Cody kissed and made up and now he's right he's done right by you by your by your favorite or whatever else or I don't know what it is but now because well, this man's going up to- we'll, we'll get to it in the match they still had to do all those smoke and mirrors Let, let's not skip okay. over that. that that's what I was gonna get to so that's why I don't understand like he's rooting for this dude Cody ain't never changed Cody has always been Cody Cody ain't out here trying to be the best technical wrestler in the world Cody's out here trying to be the best WWE wrestler he can, or superstar he can be. And that man, eventually when he comes back, it's going to be huge because that dude has, has shoved all of this shit in their face while be, while becoming a top indie star guy, while being still a WWE performer, a WWE superstar in the indie world. Like, this dude, like, you know, say what you want to, like, this dude, like, got it out the mud and, and like, I granted, like, you know, he had, he had foundation, he had connections, whatever else. He still had to, like, be the be the one guy amongst all the whole business. All these guys that that leave out of WWE have all the talent in the world, and they make it to a certain extent and come back or whatever else. Like this dude's gonna come back, maybe as one of the biggest stars that like this ever just sl- completely slept slept through a mist or whatever else, and is about to come back and or, or eventually whenever he does come back, I think it's gonna be huge. And I and I'm I really hope that like he gets his run with the WWE title on SmackDown or whatever secondary uh, top champion is on a second brand or whatever else. Like, I think that, I think he's that level, like in the first year back, like this is amazing. Now, if you want, now, if you want to talk about the super, the legends cameo, I, I, I want you to get to Nick Aldis and his, uh, his crew. So we can, <clears throat> so we can go ahead and get to it. 
So, um, Nick Aldis came out there and he had an entourage of Tim Storm, uh, the former NWA heavyweight champion he won the belt from. Sean Davari was out there for some reason. And this guy has done it again, bruh. And when I say this guy, y'all know exactly who I'm talking about. I am talking about J E double F J A double R E double T, the greatest finesser in the history of the game. Jeff Jarrett has shown up. And, and do you think he got a check for this, James? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh my and god, should, this is disgusting. So, 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 so keep so get me right on the timeline, right? Get me right on the timeline. Last weekend. He was on the t- he was on Triple Mania as a champion. Lost yes, belt, right? Yes, and they call him people then, Basura out there. <laughs> yes, he, I mean, he said he said you guys are bar sir. I was screaming. He said that on LOP. <laughs> okay, so you have that. Then on Monday he was on Raw. the Legends panel thing discussing whether or not Undertaker or Triple H is going to win in, in the Australia pay per view. Then on Saturday he's on All In. Bro, what the fuck is this man doing this? <laughs> and it was probably a star cast, like like getting checks probably. as well. Unbelievable. No one's a greater finesser. And, and and the reason that the Jeff Jarrett he can't win, right? But if he was eligible to win, the only reason he can't win is because the award is named after him. Like, <laughs> so this is this is a perfect uh, explanation for why it's called the Jeff Jarrett Finesser of the Year Award. This man is showing y'all how to finesse in, in y'all everyday lives. Jeff Jarrett is doing it. Um, but yeah, when you get to the match, um, I thought all this and Cody had had certain spots in the match where they were doing a lot of good back and forth work. And then for some reason, they just wanted to start going to, you know, the gimmicks, the blade job, uh, Brandy jumping in the ring, the, uh, the spot with DDP coming in doing a diamond cutter. But that part, you know, that part worked really well, huge pop, but you know, it, Cody in the ring is, you know, Cody in the ring, the way these matches are structured, there's a lot of smoke, a lot of mirrors, but once the finish came and they did that, you know, Brett Bulldog uh, finish, the Okada Omega first fall finish uh, from Dominion this year, the building lost his mind. And I was like, oh my God, he won. When, 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 like, I, it, it popped me when, when he won. Uh, he yeah. won the title that his father held 39 years ago, and all of a sudden, like the NWA title was like back on the map like that. And I don't want to take away from Nick all this because, like, bro, when I watched that video, the way this man, like, the way people tried to ride for Jinder Mahal as the champion last year, when they say what a champion looks like and the way he dresses with the suit and everything like that, Nick all this was that. Times three. But can like, <laughs> but can it actually work? Yeah. Like, like there is something to be said about gender actually being a looks apart all star. Like we, you know, we always talk about the th- we always talk about this in basketball, but we you know, in wrestling because you like we care less about that more and more every single day. Like, you can't like you know almost like the Enzo Mori thing. Like seven feet tall, and you can't teach height, right? But all this looked apart. He looks great, credible gear. He can, he can work. He probably should be doing something other than being in, in, in NWA or whatever else he's doing. He probably should be in uh, in WWE somewhere. Why he's not, who knows? But uh, I thought I thought they had a really good match. I wasn't really understanding the psychology of uh, the smoke and mirrors they pulled out. Normally, any smoke and mirror matches with Cody, whether it's with uh, both Kenny matches or the Okada match, like they all make sense. For mo- for the most part, this one kind of like I don't really get like I don't, I didn't really get the Brandy thing like he ain't cheat he just yeah. got in the ring just to you know I thought that was kind of weird but like you know this was a sh- this was a match on a show where no one gave a damn about that they just wanted a- one particular result and once the re- once the result happened like like you know Jim Cornette always laments about like people wanted to live and die with one guy and when they when they threw the babies in the air so mission accomplished yeah and these and he, guys you know and, it, and, it, and i think everybody i think i think there was a sentimental attachment for everybody that like regardless of what if you think about cody like everyone knows how you know how much that dude's busted his ass for the last you know since he left you that or three years ago whatever else to get to this point to where like he's made this thing happen like i think i think you know even if even though i think even the biggest hit in the world has, has to have some appreciation about that which is you know i think why you came around you realize like you hate if you want to but you're wasting your time yeah, like, and 
like I just didn't want my 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 whole thing was was I didn't want that near my Kenny Omega matches. Like I I just didn't like, <laughs> and I didn't see it at all. Like I I thought you know. I realized that Omega had a Wrestler of the Year award to win this year, and it would be like, okay, what about these matches? Or whatever. I was like, I don't want any parts of it. And we trucked through that, like, like from an Omega fan perspective. But when you looked at it with the story for All In, there was no way that he could come into this match not a babyface. So maybe that Cody and Kenny feud was actually important. Like, like, because they use that to turn him at the end of it. So when that he comes in now, a baby face to almost everyone with watching the videos. And if you do the work, um, as far as like, and no pun intended with his weight belt, <laughs> if you do the work to follow these stories, you were rewarded for it. And I felt like I was rewarded for it. Like if I didn't watch the 21 minute video before this show and I watched it during the six o'clock hour, I probably wouldn't have like come around like that. And gotcha. that's a testament to how great these um, videos were that were produced. But uh, big victory for, for Cody. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. Hopefully all this isn't just tossed in the trash. This is a rebirth for him as well. Someone can pick him up somewhere, whether that's Ring of Honor, whether he ends up in New Japan somewhere, or Impact again, or even WWE. Um, but yeah, you guys are going to go out of your way to... I, I went four stars on that one. Yeah, that's about what I was thinking. I, I thought it was in the four of the four star variety. Like if you go three seven five, because the psychology is, is kind of wonky um, with the with the smoke and mirror stuff. I get you, but like the emotion of that crowd, the story that was presented to you, I, I felt like that was four star worthy. And I mean, that was that felt like a big match on that felt like a for lack of a better word, like like a nineties main event pay per view match. Like a '90s boxing pay per view match, <laughs> like like when they walked out with all those guys, and it was, I, I really liked that. Um, after that, Hangman Page and Joey Janela um, were out there. Now I wrote before this that these guys may attempt to kill each other, and that's what happened. Um, <laughs> whether it was uh, the finish that saw Hangman Page hit that move off the ladder through the table as Joey Janela holds his own neck to make sure it doesn't break, uh, Joey Janela somersaulting into the to the crowd um, off the Cracker Barrel or something like that, the um, power bomb from the 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 steps on the top through the double tables, uh, Penelope Ford hitting all those flips and crazy moves on this guy, and then they, this is where a lot of the being the elite stuff showed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in full especially force. When you, especially when you uh, you account for like the murder of Joey Ryan and all that other stuff, and and the murder weapon and the talking boots. Uh, yeah, it, it was just it was a whole lot, and if. And if that's not your thing, like this was the show, this was the match where, like, if you are not into oh, if gimmicks, you're if you're if you're in the Fed Defense Squad, this is this is you all day. Like this this is all people wanted to talk about were the dicks. Like like throw out the Cody Rhodes match, throw out the main event, throw out uh, Pentagon, throw out Okada. We want to talk about these dicks, like Young Thug, like no, <laughs> like, like like come on, man, like. This shit has been, and I'm going to defend the dicks here. So, <laughs> okay, no, no, yeah, no. yeah, okay, not, we won't get there yet. So, okay, so my thing is saying, like, if if you know, if you are looking for a, uh, if you're if you're picking out one match, you'd be like, what the fuck is this? This absolutely is the what the fuck is this match? Like, this is just this is a you know they try to kill each other, which is like, you know, understatement. Yeah, yeah, like. When you said they they they, they uh, Hangman gave him the running power bomb off of the ramp through the double tables, I was like, "What double tables? He only hit one of them." The other <laughs> died. Like Janela, like Janela, when he did the uh, the elbow drop through the t- through the table yes. um, on the floor, like he was just splitting his he was just having his leg hit the the corner of the table because uh, Hangman is not like on it right, so he's a gash in his leg. I'm like, yo. Th- this yeah, thing here, so like, Hangman, like, the, the deal with that one was, you know how tables are supposed to break in the middle, right? It didn't break in the middle. It broke, like, on the left side. So, like, it was, like, 70 or 80% of the table on one side was available. It was a crack, and then it was, like, 20%. So something yeah, like, was it broke, off right, there. It broke right underneath one of the legs. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and then from there, you know, after the match, now it was it was crazy. Like if you are into like absolute like insane spot dangerous shit, like this is for you. And I don't mind it. James isn't really a huge fan of it, but I'm not, I, I'm not a fan of people getting dropped on their heads or people doing stuff that's unnecessarily dangerous. Like the spots, like I've seen variations of spots like as dangerous as that. Like obviously, I've seen people get elbowed or or people catch flashes or elbow drops uh, from the top rope through a table that's on the floor and people get power bombed off of, you know, off of, of, of an elevated position to, uh, through a table or whatever else. But it was just, it, it was just like to see so many of them. That was kind of was like, Oh, okay. All right. Like y'all have fun. Like being in, in an ice bath tomorrow. <laughs> so for the, so for the being the elite gags, like they started with the telephone. Now, if you watch being the elite, uh, hey man, Page bludgeoned this man to death with the telephone, like and killed him yes. apparently. So that's the whole yes. deal with the bags. Now then, all of a sudden, uh, the arena like went out, and then all the dicks came out to come get this man. And this is Joey Ryan. This was and this being it's WrestleMania. That, no, no, no. You're missing. You're missing one crucial thing. The lights go off, and then they show the video of Joey Ryan dead. That's right. And then and then they show Joey Ryan's dick, and then it and then it like resurrects resurrects like yes like, uh, yes, yes um, so resurrection. so then all of a sudden he gets hard so he's basically like coming back so it, it was basically like Undertaker after the Yoko's in the casket match <laughs> where it's like he's in a coffin wrestling a piece and he rises above like you know the dick is all and in the. The, the penis druids come out. It's about the it's same like, time yo, frame too. Is... Sorry, it's about the same time frame too. You know, Undertaker yeah. got like like Joey Ryan got killed back in like January or something like that, and, and he's just you know resurrecting now. So, um, they did all this stuff, and this is the re- the quote unquote WrestleMania of the Independence, right? If you were to give Joey Ryan a special interest, what would it be, James? It would be with the dicks, like, <laughs> like it would be with the dicks, like, and and of course this is or lolly or lollipops or c- yeah, correct, yeah, it would be something like that. Joey yeah. Ryan is a comedy act, comedy wrestler. This should not be the defining thing of All In. Of course, it will be to those that want to, you know throw shade or whatever. But this is a thing that happened for maybe ninety seconds on the show. Like when the dicks came out and and, whoop, and you know he whooped his ass and then they carried his ass off essentially. It's you know a being it sounds like yeah. You know what it sounds like how you how you came how you like it's only ninety seconds. Yeah, it only took it only took like twenty seconds for Snitchy to kick that fucking uh, uh baby doll too. So like don't don't just don't just slide on and be like you know oh the, you know the Katie Vick the Katie Vick segment uh with Triple H dressed up as as Kane with the mask in the funeral home like that was only in a cadaver and like, that was only like. A thirty-second segment. What about the rest of the show? Like, nah, man, shit was whack, and like we can just move on from here. Like, yeah. there was a great show, and one thing just like, look, man, some people are just not going to like that. Yeah. I'm one of those people. But we, uh, the whatever. building we fucking exploded. I'll say that. Yes, <laughs> the, crowd, the crowd, the crowd, the crowd loved it. Yeah, the, the crowd loved it. However, like I imagine, this is a mostly adult show, but I'm sh- assume there will be there were a few kids there, a few kids there. Imagine you taking your daughter or your son to the show, and you just like. <laughs> and you, and you, and you, somehow you got to explain it or cover their eyes or something but like how are you going to explain like a dozen a dozen 12 foot inflatable white penises yeah yeah I think that's the only real problem with it but um, moving on um, <laughs> <laughs> we have the ROH world title match um, with <laughs> You know, just just get to the title match, right? Um, so Jay Lethal and uh, Flip Gordon, uh, who won the Battle Royal, and Flip was being accompanied by Brandy. Um, so Jay Lethal is in the back, walking through with his regular gear on. And if you guys seen like you know being elite, the the whole gag leading up to it, uh, Jay Lethal has had some type of experience. This is how he's got to do the black machismo thing. Anytime he's like chopped or slapped on the chest, he turns into Macho Man Randy Savage. So, you know, there was a, the probably my favorite gag uh throughout the whole time of this has been with Lethal. Uh seeing Cody backstage, he was like, Hey Dream, you're on the gas. You're looking good out there. Like <laughs> 
so this man's coming out there with, with Lanny Poffo, right? And going to the ring. And apparently the, the outfit they, they got was from a collector. Uh, and it was an actual Macho Man jacket and all that. I don't know if he had access to the full archive of Macho Man clothes. But what I thought what he picked was, was pretty cool. Um, yeah, but my only problem was it was that... <sighs> It's a small problem. This is, and this is a really nitpicky thing. Was like, what he came out in was was like, clearly WCW, um, Slim Jim, Cowboy Hat Macho Man, which is past the prime Macho Man. Mm-hmm. That was my only issue with it. Other than that, like I thought it was fun and it was great. Yeah, man. Um, and this match was to me. Uh, this will be. I think. I think the right decision was made here. Um, it, even though I think the crowd would have lost their minds had they saw another title change with Flip Gordon. He's he's not ready yet. Um, he's a phenomenal athlete. He's an incredible athlete. One of the best in the business already. He's got a long way to go as far as like wrestling and putting together matches. Um, <clears throat> and the part I thought was hilarious, obviously, was Jay Lethal acting like Brandy was Elizabeth the whole time. That was some of the funniest shit yeah. I've ever seen. They had uh, he grabs he he rolls out the ring after after uh once and around once around the ring and uh grabs her and puts her in position. She leaves, gets out the he rolls out the ring again the same like Macho Man does yes. used to and and puts him back in the spot again. Then uh there's another spot where uh he like after he has the advantage, he chases her, which is like that's also kind of like uh that's also like some subtext for the relationship between Macho Man and Elizabeth, but like chase her around the ring and then uh, Brandy gets into the ring and then all of a sudden you do the WrestleMania seven, like on the shoulder uh, spot too. And I was like, yo, this is, yes. <laughs> like, this is great. She, um, this is so, this is so stupid, but it's great. Yes. She, she yelled at him. I'm not Liz. And then, you know, hit him on the shoulder and that turns him back into regular Jay lethal. And then he has yes. like the regular Jay lethal match. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, uh, Lanny's out there, and imagine Jay Lethal now looking at Lanny like, "Why are you here?" And then Jay, yeah. uh, Lanny wants him to hit the elbow, but he Lanny gets it. He has to chop Jay Lethal to turn him back to Macho Man, so he chops him. Then all of a sudden, you know, you get the um, you know the big moves, uh, the the elbow drops, and he ends up getting the win off Flip Gordon. Uh, to no, defeat. no, 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 no. Let, let's continue. Oh yeah, so hits, yeah. I forgot three, this shit. He hits- he hits three elbow drops. Correct. And then and then Flip kicks out at th- kicks out on the third on the third one. I, and then I thought that he was doing Ultimate Warrior because it made me think of WrestleMania Seven. Right. Which made me think, oh no, is Flip about to like beat Jay Lethal and then by, by like pinning him with a foot on his chest? Like, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and, but he it turns out it, he's hulking up, and I was like, "Oh God!" Like between the national anthem and then this, like okay. yeah, they did play the anthem at the beginning of this show. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, I, 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 as soon as I saw the Hulk Hogan stuff, I was just like, "Oh, great!" Um, <laughs> at least he beat him. Look, he beat him though. Yeah, Hogan lost. Macho you man, know, Macho Man finally beat Hogan. Yes, finally. Yes, after all I, these decades. Yes, out here making it right. You know. <laughs> So, uh, after that, uh, Bully Ray old ass was out there and I'm not here for Bully Ray. James ain't here for Bully Ray. The building wasn't here for Bully Ray. I'm tired of Bully I'm Ray. Gonna... Retire, leave, exit, vacate, depart. Yeah. So I'm assuming that, I'm assuming that, uh, he came because he was upset that he lost the battle royal, right? Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, and he ends up uh, with his ass out there, uh, and Colt Cabana comes out. You would think the pop would be um, a big, uh, you know, pop for them, you know, after he's, you know, coming out to save those guys, but I think Bully Ray is just such go-away heat at this point. Yeah. No one cares. It's like, hey, man, just wrap this shit up, bro. And they give this man the shield powerbomb through the table. The crowd had a weird reaction to it. Lots. It sounded like they were booing. Um, (laughs) I couldn't really, like, you know, make it out. But yeah, but yeah, but what I will say is like, ultimately, for the most part, all of these all of these matches, um, you pretty for the most part, all these things, all these matches gave you happy endings, so they kept the crowd engaged. Like we're getting what we want, yep. As opposed to, are they going to delay us getting what we want, and then we'll never know if we're actually going to get it, or are we about to get like teased and get close to it, and then like. We have a dude have a fucking fake dislocated knee. I'm done. I'm, I'm not talking about uh, about Johnny Gargano. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. I'm, I'm so so freaking tired of it. like I'm so bitter about this match about this 
freaking uh takeover from uh, two two weeks oh, ago. Man. I'm so bitter about it still. I, Let's just move on, man. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it later in our NXT review. But yeah, Gargano's is like kind of in trouble right now. Um, Kenny Omega versus Pentagon. Now this match, it, it feel it, it like it felt like we could draw a line from everything that happened thus far, and then everything that would happen after this, and be like, all right, this is another part of the show we're entering right here, and this was the beginning yeah. of it. So Pentagon yes, was out. It, it, it felt very, it felt very much like the, like when we talk about the amal- amalgamation stuff. This card was built in part, aside from where the Cody match was. This felt like a uh, a New Japan card, where it's like the top build matches, the matches that everyone is intrigued for, will be at the end, and you guys, you guys, we're going to give you good stuff um, in between and funny stuff and all the hee ha stuff, but the real is at the end. Yeah. And the real it was. Um, <laughs> I would say the real was back, but it, it was there off rip. Um, yeah. Omega and Pentagon came out here, and I think they had a classic. Uh, Kenny yeah. Omega came out here and wrestled what it seemed like he was trying to get Pentagon hired in New Japan. That's what it felt like. He gave this man so much as far as offense, as far as near falls, as far as you know, just dropping that man in, in ridiculous, dangerous ways. Uh, and then, of course, Omega was Omega. And it was, this match was incredible. I went 4.75 on it. Uh, I didn't think it was a 5, but I feel like these guys have that in them. And I never really got to see Pentagon, like, come out here with this kind of style before. I've always seen him doing the hardcore stuff. And he proved that he could hang on this level. And he's, like, one of the most special guys in the world right now. Yeah, I thought I thought I thought four and a half, four and three quarters that area. Uh, I thought that. <clears throat> I mean, it, it's sort of weird for me because every time I don't think I've ever seen Penta in a match that wasn't, you know, at the least bit like great, great. Like I think every I think the worst match I've ever seen was like a three and three quarters. So like he's almost he's on. I mean, obviously I haven't seen as much as uh, Ibushi or Ishi, whatever. But like he's on that level. Where, like I've never seen a dude not have a good at least a good match. So. um it was, it was cool to see like the differences in their styles where um you know obviously Phoenix is the is the freaking supernova of, of just talent and moves and, and um creativity, but Pence has always been the guy that, you know, gets more out of less. Um and I don't mean that I don't mean it in the typical sense of like trying to give a backhanded compliment. Like this dude has a presence of uh in a essence of realness and toughness that, you know, the other luchadors that I've seen of re- of recent that uh, that I come across just don't tend to have, especially because you know he's willing to do crazy things in matches. It's like a young, violence. it's like it's like a young Laparka, essentially. <laughs> like you know, you know what? That's a good idea. Like minus the, minus the goofy shit. Like yes, yeah. he is kind of yeah. He there is some Laparka in him in that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I never thought about it before. That's actually a good one. But yeah, I guess maybe that means like you know they're gonna be selling off, the, especially with the you know Pentagon and the Cerro Nierdo Ner- stuff like. There might be even multiple gimmicks out there, multiple yeah. Leparka. Maybe that man comes out there with the pirate as a pirate of the Caribbean. Somebody else knows like, with the pirate of the Caribbean uh, uh, face paint mask. Maybe I mean you saw Jericho, so maybe look, there yes. really are two uh, pitchers yes, out two there. Two pitchers, <laughs> two pitchers. Did not know that. But yeah, I thought this match was great. I thought that. Um, I honestly thought that like pitcher. I thought that near fall. Yes, like, I, I did too. Really did. And, and, and I felt like, okay, Okada and Omega aren't going to lose or anything. And I think part of the reason you put um, Marty with Okada was you're not bringing Okada here to lose. Um, and I was talking to Finish all like, and even going to the main event, he was like, why didn't they do a Abushi and Ray singles match? I'm like, well, Abushi's probably going to get a title shot within the next three months or two months. And then Ray, you don't want to beat him uh, on his way to WWE. So that's why you do the six man, essentially. And this right. match just kind of worked out as being the best possible match that you could get from a guy in Pentagon who you could beat, but you could also have him have a great match. And, and lo- if you're losing to the IWGP world champion, like, I don't think that's that much of a loss and also this is and, and also it's his biggest match by far in america yeah and and you know how you know when we talk about all the wrestling around the world especially north america wrestling like mexico is always like at the bottom of the list as far as like people around here like watching it so i you know i, I have some i have some uh assumptions on why it's like that but uh you know, this was for him like this was the biggest show of his of his you know of his career in America, and he came on bald, and I'm happy for him, and like hope he gets a whole bunch of work, and I hope the price goes up wherever he yes. goes because 
because him and pay the man or some special pay the man um <laughs> and uh something something interesting that i i had brought with james um uh, they didn't uh the reason i think they didn't come out with the titles essentially like throughout all the cards Tessa blanche is a champion right now obviously omega is a champion right now i want to say there was one more guy that didn't uh, wear a title but um <clears throat> they didn't want you thinking about belts that were not on the line essentially and i thought that was a smart thing to do uh, because it just felt like its own unique thing. And uh, after this match, of course, we got the return of Y2J, or excuse me, Pentagonico, as he said. Um, on, <laughs> on, <laughs> yes, Pentagonico, yes. That's hilarious. So uh, um, the lights go out when Omega's celebrating or whatever, and, and the lights are always going out on Omega when somebody wants to whoop his ass, right? Uh, this is the new thing. So especially when Jericho wants to whoop on Omega. So... <laughs> Just wait till Kenny gets to WWE and that gong go off. Oh my god, <laughs> bro! Could, I could I could literally picture them doing like a Kenny Omega is terrified of the Undertaker angle and and me hating every second of it. Like this is bullshit. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. So after the match, uh, Pentagon the original is laying down on the mat. Obviously, the lights go out. And all of a sudden. Pentagon's on the mat still, right? Except it ain't Pentagon. And you can clearly tell, like, he's a little bit, like, slimmer. Not that much slimmer. Um, You can see the arms and the tattoos are different. And I was like, oh, my God, it's Jericho immediately. Like, it, it, it didn't even take, like, anything. Like, any guesswork, nothing. And I was amazed. I, okay. So, I didn't realize until I saw the arm tattoo. I was like, oh, shit, that's Jericho. Like, because at first I was like, wait, the gear doesn't look exactly the same. Right. That's weird. Did he change gear? Like, I thought like maybe he's like some Undertaker metamorphosis thing. Like, he's some supernatural thing. But then I look to see the tattoo. I was like, oh, it's Jericho. I was like, okay. I was like, so what does it lead to? And then I found out to the cruise. And I was like, oh, man, it's on the cruise. Like, they, I don't know if they're streaming yet or if there ever will be. I was kind of disappointed. I was like, I want to see this match again. I want to see them kick the crap out of each other. Yeah, so they're gonna they they're actually gonna be in the six man. So it's gonna be Jericho in the Bucks against Cody, Marty Scurll, and Omega. So this was his last plug, essentially, to try to sell cruise ships to to yeah. those motherfuckers in the building, and then everybody watching right now. And I don't think you can think of a better idea. And this finally put to get. To Put to bed the thing that Jericho won't show up at a show in North America. He's quite, he's telling you, he's quite frankly uh, done with that shit and he will do it. So, <laughs> so, so do you think people will say, oh, you, you, you know, you, you're, you're a hypocrite or something like that? Or like, you, I, is it already out there? You're a liar. Yeah, is that, it came out I yet? imagine if it's not out there yet, it's coming. And then Jericho will tell those people to go fuck themselves. It's about a, he's about a dollar with the fuck is 50 cents. Like, <laughs> Yeah, like, look, I under, I understand it. I understand the situation, but however, like, regardless of how big you know Jericho has been, and regardless of how um, how much Jericho has done over the last, mm, let's say, twelve years for Vince or whatever else, and how and how many of his programs have been like the best, well, or the most thoroughly executed from start to finish uh, programs in recent WWE history, it don't matter. When he signed him, he was a WCW cruiserweight, and he's never going to push that dude. That he's never going to push that dude at the level that he pushed someone like Triple H. You know, they're basically at the same level, regardless of how much how much more over push, how much more over push Triple H got over the, over the past uh, eighteen years. Mm -hmm. So, a bit, you know, <clears throat> if if you know uh, Jericho wants to say, you know what, Vince, I've done this, this, and this for you. I'm literally on your on your freaking uh, show opener of the legends or whatever else, but you don't treat me like I'm the top guy, even though I'm the biggest star in the company uh, right now when I show up every day. All right, I'll just go somewhere else and then do this or whatever else. If, if you know, you know he's getting a big, you know he's getting the money to do it. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. And also, he's a he put himself in the position with the Alpha versus Omega shit to be not someone jumping on a bandwagon. But being a catalyst for this shit, like that shit opens up right. so much stuff. Like, w like right. because of Jericho, he's he is a part of this. Whatever this energy is right now, Jericho is a part of it. Yes, like we were, you know, and we go back to Wrestle Kingdom eleven and the six star match, and you go to WrestleMania twelve. Like the only the the biggest difference is Jericho. 
a WWE legend shows up, wrestles Kenny, and and just everything has changed as far as like the the presence amongst the stratosphere of of pro wrestling, like. People, people. Like he, you know, he kicked that, the door open internationally for, for every for yeah, all these people, promotions, like to just start yes. crisscrossing and shit. And, and like this is like the right. Jericho column I wrote about, um, you know, a couple weeks ago. Like he's like got his hands in Impact essentially, like being like a shadow guy there, and he could feasibly show up there. And all these wrestlers can show up in all these different places. That kicked yeah, the door and, open. And also, and the thing I think that's the main thing about like you know WWE apologists or loyalists or whatever you want to call them, like. The the thing I don't, I don't I think like over time as this keep you know as this thing keeps happening or whatever else more and more and more and more people I think ultimately what we're going to understand is that like them people coming in and leaving will make the product fresher because there'll be more matchups because they'll have to switch things up it won't just be like oh it's Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns for like the <laughs> third for like the third different iteration of of a of a, of a program together as a uh, because like no one just leaves and everybody stays around. Like that's the reason why like Randy Orton feels feels so stale because like there's all this talent. There's more Joe. There's AJ Styles. Uh, there is <clears throat> Nakamura. Sorry, there's, 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 there's Nakamura. Daniel there's, uh, Bryan. No, not Andrade Cien yeah, Almas. Almas, who I was thinking of. There's Almas, and what's he doing? He's fighting a dude. He's wrestling a decade ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And granted, the feud is going well, very, very well right now. Like I, I think the feud is two thumbs up right now. But we've seen this dude wrestle this dude a decade ago. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Yeah. So, and I don't know how long they can keep this thing up. Uh, how many times they can they can go back with these stories? But it seems like they're cultivating, and hopefully, like one or two guys will fall out each year. That can join this and put their own like spin on it, essentially, and it, it, that's what you will hope. Yes, yeah. that's what you will hope. So after this was uh, Okada against Marty Skrull. Now Marty had the whole deal in the back with the two hands coming at him and telling him he's just a cruiserweight. Uh, this has obviously been another gag from being the elite. He reached out. He finally broke those fuckers' fingers um, and basically said, "I'm gonna go out there and drop forty right now." So <laughs> was that was that basically like? Uh, Guilty conscience. Yeah, it's like you can say that. Yeah, it's like you got the angel and the devil on both your shoulders. It's like, nah, screw both of you. I'm breaking both of your hands, and I'm getting out of here. I'm gonna do me. Right. Um, so Okada has has done it again, bro. He has fooled me with this other with this broken Okada shit with this, with this with the other music. I, I I was cranking up. I I thought he was coming out to the real you know Okada music. I was like, hell yeah, it's on. Let's go, Rainmaker, and then. You hear that record scratch, and it's like the other music's fine, but you know there's just a difference. Is this tape stop like which one's more jarring? Which tape stop is more, or record skip is more jarring? That after it starts, and then they go, and then it start stops with that, and then it goes on the new music, or the Dolph Ziggler stab at the beginning where he does a record scratch and then plays the same music he's been he's had since like 2000. 12. I think it's the Okada Which one. Which one's more jarring? I think it's the Okada one because like he, he okay. reels us in with something we want to hear and then all of a sudden it's like, hold on, what is this? Gotcha. And the, and the weird part about it is like, it's so similar to the old one, but it just ain't quite, you yep. know, it ain't, it quite, ain't quite hidden. Yet. Yep. Um, so I thought this match was great. Um, they came through and uh, I was talking to Dave about this one as well. He he told me he Okada struck him as uh, someone that needs a lot of time to get his matches, uh, you know, over essentially. Like and he excels like it, in those in those long form uh, matches. They did Ooh. go over. Like is he, is, yeah, yeah, they did go over. But the thing is, like, I mean, I don't know how familiar Dave is with him, but like this dude is the best wrestler in the world. He can wrestle. He's wrestling I told anyone's him he, style. I told he him he's, like, he's the most versatile wrestler to ever live. Like, that's what that's what I told him. Like, he can do a 40 minute cell job. Like, he's getting his ass beat the whole match or he can, or he can do a, or he can do a, like, you know, wrestle with the most athletic, like, like, you know, one of the most athletic gifted wrestlers of all time in a, in a lightning, fa- uh, and I'm sorry, in like a lightning finish for lightning finish for like the last 15 minutes for 15 minute stretch. Like, he can do it all. The thing is, I think that I think that this was him doing his typical big New Japan big show match where it's like he's used to being on these cards that 
and we talk about this when we talk about car placement and for WWE have using Paris in New Japan and about how they do these filler matches that are like, a, you know, that are palate cleansers, supposed to be palate cleansers. It's like, no, Ain't none of that. the reason why New Japan has these matches and they stack them at the back and then they all go for time <clears throat> is because in the first part of the match is they are cleansing the palate for themselves so they can get, so they can build the crowd up. People just think that, or maybe it's history because WWE wrestling has historically not been as good as, let's say, um, Crockett's wrestling was, or uh, Florida's wrestling, or um, San Francisco's wrestling, that they don't feel like they can get the crowd back after they go for a long time and have a hot finish on one match and then go back in there and do it again because they don't know if they can pull through in the middle in the middle uh, middle third and the last third act of their of the, the next match. Yeah. Where <clears throat> it's Okada, of course he can't. He's done it a million times. So that's the kind of match we got. So I mean, I understand like from Dave's perspective, he thought like, oh, this is a do nothing match at the beginning, and then it turns out great. It's like, nah, that was by design. Yeah. Um, these well, well rehearsed, well practice design over dozens of times, <laughs> years. <laughs> yes. um, like, and I, I was telling him like, you know, the the thing used to be to to be to compare Randy Orton to Okada. I'm like, that's almost an insult at this point. Like, <laughs> to 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 say that like I, Okada's just something else. Like, so yeah, yeah. This match, this I thought, like, yeah, it, it kind of does sound like when I used to do it. Like now, now that I know more, it does very much sound like when um. <laughs> it very much does sound like what Phil Jackson was comparing was comparing Steph Curry's game, saying he's not original. He plays just like a yes. <laughs> like Mahmoud Abu Yes. Like, no, we talk about a whole different evolution, bro. <laughs> like I get what you're saying, but no, nah. it's something else. Uh, so they they had a lot of cool spots um towards the end and a legendary finishing sequence at the end. I feel like with uh they they pulled out the umbrella with the all in joint. They've done that before with the Bullet Club thing. Um, right. they did the finger break where uh okada was saying he was going to 205 live essentially and you know they set that whole thing up that's been a being the elite gag and okada finally got him out of there with the rainmakers but i think marty's girl is going to be a heavyweight soon yeah and also that's, and that's also some foreshadowing because like let's say they do all get signed down you know they all go get the bag right yeah all the you know all of the elite guys like all six of them right they all go get the bag well what do you think w- if, if Vince has his say on things? What do you think? Where do you think Marty Stroll will go? <sighs> yeah, he put a, he, he will throw him in the pile of misbegotten toys and on on a third on Saturday. I'm sorry, Tuesday on, nights on Tuesday nights, and to be like the well, end. He'll be so he'll, he'll be getting that, written. That, up, he'll be getting about written about by our boy Clive. Yeah, two hundred five Clive. Yep. So they'd be like, yeah, you know, great wrestler, great match crowd wasn't into it but then again people be into marty but like that would also fit into the same people that are there that are really hyped for those two or five matches yeah i went um four and a half on this match with okada and squirrel and you know slow beginning but the end was really hot uh and i think that's just like you know par for the course essentially with with okada this is okada's regular match yeah, and the rest. Yeah, and the wrestling was like airtight throughout. So like, even yeah. if you aren't like were too 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 into it in the beginning, like you go back and rewatch it, the wrestling was there, yeah. and that translates. On to our main event: uh, the Young Bucks and Kota Ibushi, the Golden Elite or the Golden Bucks, as I called them, uh, defeated Rey Mysterio, <laughs> Phoenix, and Bandito. Bandito fastly becoming my one of my new favorite guys on the. Um, uh, independent scene now, James. I was driving when I was watching this match, so I didn't get to pay great attention to it. So I was like, you know, kind of watching, you know, intermittently and saw how fast paced it was moving. But explain this match to me. This match is a blur because so much stuff happened. Like, I understand that they had to cram, they had to condense this match or fit more stuff in because of uh, the time constraints. Yeah, but. It seemed to me like the camera crew and the production crew in the back picked everything up. And if we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about all in as far as uh, as far as the, the production aspect. Like this was the best job they did in any match as far as capturing everything um, in the way that it was intended because there was so much stuff going on, like hella corkscrew uh, dives all over the place. Super kick party, of course. Um, Ray, like, 
you know that this match is crazy when you have when like Ray is like the guy that they're treating like the old timer and, he, and he's the one that's quote unquote taking it easy, like and it, it's Ray being Ray. So it's like this is this not like there's hurricanes, <laughs> there's hurricanes everywhere. Uh, there's six one nines, there, there's saves for six one uh, six one nines. There's um, you know there's there's all types of stuff. Like it was a blur. Like I can't, I, it was just a great match for, for the, uh, for the short amount of time that they had to do it. And Lord knows what they would have, what would have happened to that arena. If they had actually went to full 28 that they, that they thought they were going to have, because like that place, that was an incredible match. Just in that short amount of time, imagine giving a double the amount of time to, to do everything like that. I mean, that could have been a five star match. Yeah. It absolutely. Could have been a five star match. Everything I saw, like I, I felt comfortable like grading it. Like, even though I didn't like, zone in on the match i thought it was about four and a half from what i was watching so <laughs> um glad to I w- see i would say what? i would say that it's like four and a quarter because i can't because i it's really i mean it's been done before where you can have a you can have i mean this done been done a bunch of times where you can have a uh a sub 15 minute four and a half star match has been done i've seen it but i don't you know i don't feel we, really we, we know where they were going i don't, I don't really feel comfortable doing it. All I know is this. If they went 28 minutes and, like, they were at the pace they were going at, like, that was definitely a five-star match. That's I'll leave it, I'll leave it at that. Right. It was a five-star, 12-minute match. Right. Um, that wraps up uh, All In. Like, uh, this is this is match, or excuse me, this show had great matches, great moments, spots for legends, comedy. It had great card structure. It had yes. great camera work. It had good commentary. It had a big fight feel for certain matches. And it had fans that were just so happy during the whole show. And, you know, f- people say it's easy to cater to, you know, the the fans that were going to this show. These fans, it could not be harder to impress these fans who have seen it all. They've seen the seven star matches with with Kenny Omega and Okada. They've seen every crazy six man PWG thing. This is the most seasoned like kind of fan base as far as like watching wrestling that you're gonna find like in the world yeah. right now. So is, you can miss me with that bullshit. Like it's easy to yeah. cater to have to thrive in these uh at these uh you know circumstances and in this atmosphere. You have to come to play or else that they will eat you alive if you don't. Yeah, and there is something to be said about knowing about understanding what your fan base wants and then giving it to them in a way. And that and, and that's not just for All In. That's not just for New Japan. That's even for WWE inside of itself. Two hundred five Live knows what the majority of fan of his fan base wants. Now, granted, is their fan base big? Hell no. It's small. It's infantile. It's infantile. Or sorry, it's uh, very small. Um, Two hundred five or some NXT much larger, and but but their fan base knows what it wants, and they give their fans what it wants. It gives itself like a, a quote unquote uh, romantic ideal of what a small indie would be if uh, it, with Vince McMahon's budget and production quality. And it, it exceeds all the time. We notice how we gush about takeover last weekend or the weekend before then. Right, all the takeovers. <laughs> um, this was very much in line with that of them knowing what their fan base wanted and them get in the people that are in charge giving it to them. Um, and now, granted, that is a lot much easier to do when you only got to do one show. In period, we don't know if they're doing it next year or what, or if they ever do it again. Right. But if you but they kept it simple and didn't get in their own way and try to be cute about it. Like they did a bunch of, they did a whole bunch of, they did a lot more sports entertainmenty things than the normal WWE fan um, would would think so going in, or the person only watched WWE would think so, or would even admit to. But they did a lot of that stuff, and they pulled it off quite well. Um, so I, not quite well, very well, and um, you know. I hope they do it all in two. Um, maybe they'll be in WWE. I don't know, but like I hope that something like this, we get another one of these. I don't know in what type of uh, form or iteration, but hope we get another one of these because that was fun as hell to watch. Yeah, um, the in the preview column that I, I wrote about all in, 
Um, <clears throat> the last paragraph was was pretty much. I don't know what was going to happen, but by the time the show was over, we would know what happened and, you know, why and <clears throat> and how it felt like uh, it, it pretty much went all ends a moment in time. There may never be another one of these. And that drove fans who realize that right now that this is a special time in wrestling to be in the building. So many things had to happen for this to even become possible. You can trace a good part of this back to Alpha versus Omega. Cody getting tired of being Stardust. Wrestle Kingdom's 11's main event and more. Whatever's driving this energy, I wish we could put it in a bottle for the rest of time. However, time always goes forward. But regardless of what happens, we will know what happened that day and what led to it. So, um, yeah. that's going to wrap up our all in review. We will be back with the rest of one nation radio after this. So we didn't realize how long we were going to go, um, <laughs> no, no, that- <laughs> on talking about all in. So that was, uh, part one. So we'll be back with part two with all our other topics this week, including, um, review for NXT, uh, thoughts on Neville, Kevin Owens, evolution, hell in a cell, uh, and WWE super showdown. So uh, tune in for part two on the feed.